Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video I want to talk to you about portal walls. Yes, I did a video on portal wall installation uh, a couple years ago and uh, I show you how to install these correctly. Uh, many people do not install them correctly. You do not need glue, you do not need soap. Um, these things just slip into in between the bead and the tire. You do have to break the bead off the tire uh, in order to slip these in. You got a ridge right here that slips in between. You blow up the tire with some air, then let the air out, and then you can hammer the portal wall in evenly. There's a line here to show you where and how far to go into the rim so it's nice and even. Like I said, you could either do it with a hammer or you can actually put it in by hand. We've done it by hand before, and that's probably the best way. Uh, so it goes evenly on the tire. Uh, but this video, I want to talk to you about the pros and cons to portal walls and who should be using them and who shouldn't be using them. Uh, I've just been getting a lot of emails and phone calls lately on them. I don't know why. Um, so I figured I, I'd bring up the topic again and, uh, and, and talk to you about it. So uh, basically, portal walls are for the budget conscious. You can buy a set of these for about 75 bucks from portalwalls.com after shipping even. And uh, you know, if you're on a uh, you're doing a backyard project with your dad, it's a first time project. You want to break the bank. You know, portal walls are pretty much the way to go. Um, they are they look just like real white walls when installed correctly. I mean, people cannot tell the difference uh, when they're installed correctly. Sometimes, if they're not installed right, you'll see a bubble on them, and you'll see they're you know they're kind of flapping away from the tire. But when you install them correctly, they actually look pretty good. We used to do this in the beginning when I started this business. Uh, you know, we were, we were budget conscious, you know, and uh, we would go with portal walls. But now when we're going high-end restoration, uh, we do not opt for portal walls. Um, I don't want to get a concourse car going and you slap portal walls on. So, but if you're just starting out, these are perfect. Um, you know, just keep in mind, uh, I li there's two companies that I've noticed that make the portal walls. I've got a company called Omega. I see Omega here and Atlas is very popular. The Atlas brand uh, as of right now is still the superior brand I feel and portalwalls.com, uh, Lucas Tire, uh, they're the ones that sell the Atlas and uh, I definitely recommend going with that. I recently picked up an Omega brand. This feels like plastic. Never used to. Uh, I used to get Omega and they actually used to come out of the bag smelling like fish oils. So they were actually very oily and very loose, very pliable, and they, they had a very durable feeling. Now this feels like absolute plastic junk. I would never, ever uh, use this. So again, aftermarket market that we have in this world today, and every year the quality seems to be going down on things. So, um, But uh, who should be using portal walls, and uh, what kind of tires should you be using portal walls on? Um, for a beetle, beetle world, uh, I'm not talking about the other car world here, um, 165 R15 radial tires, what I've used them on. Um, Lucas tires will even tell you, I mean, don't put them on radials, you can put them on, uh, put them on bias tires. Um, I have not had a problem with the radial tires. Um, you know, anything, I would say 165 and larger, uh, you're okay with when going on a beetle rim. Anything smaller than that, I don't recommend. You need a substantial uh, side uh, sidewall for the portal wall to really work. If you start having a shorter tire, uh, you know, a thinner uh, uh, rubber, it's, it's not enough of a sidewall for the, the portal wall to really grab onto, and uh, you're going to most likely ruin those portal walls or they'll wind up flying out. Uh, so I have guys calling me saying they got the big tires in the back on a Beetle, but then they got like, say, 145s in the front. Uh, I don't recommend uh, doing that, putting one uh, portal walls on a 145 tire. Uh, definitely don't do that. But if you have a 165 and larger tire, you should be okay with that. So, um, and again, installed correctly. Um, and bias tires is what they recommend. So, but I again I have no problem with the radial tires. Uh, also, portal walls are really for uh, if you have a big racing motor in your car, you don't want to use them. They're going to come out. Uh, portal walls are designed for, I would say, up to 65 miles an hour, maybe 70. Uh, you got to keep it under 70, I would think, for portal walls to survive. Um, if you go over 70, you're hitting 80 and stuff. Those portal walls are going to, you know, uh, probably start tearing up. Uh, I've seen them fray on the outside when you're going too fast, um, and they start to burn up and stuff. So uh, it's for basically puddle jumping around town, you know, weekend driver sort of thing, going to cruises, cruise nights, that sort of thing. You want to get up on the highway, that's fine, but it's cruising speed, you know, 55, 65 miles an hour. Uh, that's basically it when it comes to portal walls. I don't recommend going any faster than that. Um, so you want to have a nice large size tire and you want to definitely, um, you know, keep, 
keep the speed down. So um, if, again, if 36 horsepower motors, what we usually use 40 horsepower motors, a stock Beetle motor is absolutely fine. But if you start getting into the higher dual carb motors and they're pushing 90, 100 horsepower or something like that, um, I would say, nah, don't, definitely don't use those. So as a daily driver, nah, don't use them for daily driving. Again, these are more for puddle jumping around town, cruise nights, fair weather cars, uh, that sort of thing. You do have to keep up on them. Um, over time, they're going to start to, they might start to dirty and yellow. The, uh, if you use tire wet on these things, they're going to, they're going to start to yellow up pretty quickly. Uh, you got to keep these dry. So when I put some tire wet on my tire, I then go back with say some bleach white or something, or some, um, you can even put some a paint thinner on a rag or lacquer thinner, very little bit. Um, and to take the moisture and take whatever grease that's on the portal wall off of it, it needs to be kind of dry. Um, once you put any sort of oil or residue on it, it's going to deteriorate it pretty quickly. So um, that's the one thing about them. You got to keep up on them and keep them clean. So I've had no problem with bleach white. Uh, you can buy that from AutoZone and use those on the, the portal walls. It's okay. So, um, and, and that's basically it. I mean, there's, it's not rocket science. Um, again, there's no um, uh, difficulty installing these. I, again, I have the video on it. If there's anybody else that tells you any otherwise on how to install it, there's really not much to it. So uh, take a look at my video and you'll, you'll see. But again, more for a um, driver quali quality car, puddle jumping around town. You want to go to a show or a cruise night um, and keeping the speeds low. So. All right, I hope that debunks some of the myths out there about portal walls. They're still pretty good to use. Uh, they make the cars look good. I mean, you see that convertible in the back that actually has portal walls on it. Many people just can't even tell. Um, and until you get your finger behind the portal wall and flap it away from the tire, that's how you can really tell. Um, so it really uh, it fakes the eye sometimes. So, All right, guys, that's that tip for today. Uh, if you have any questions, please email me, chris at classicvwbugs.com or visit my website, www.classicvwbugs.com. Take care.